Fight! We now join Eric of Let's Get for a public service announcement. Oh! We... I was just cruising through Wii's virtual console. Why would I be doing that now with several other more modern virtual consoles available on other systems? Well, not too long ago, I downloaded some games for Xbox 360's Xbox Live Indie games before it went dormant October 7th, 2017. There were actually some pretty good games on there, and it's sad to see downloadable game services getting rid of some of their old games that will be fading into obscurity and for some quite possibly going away permanently. The 100% digital gaming age is definitely convenient, but I still prefer physical media, and it does worry me about some of my personal collection and Preserving games for the future in general. I imagine a day when people will learn about a game online but be unable to play it for themselves unless they pirate it or track it down on an old storage device or console that happens to have the game loaded on it. It's pretty bleak. Unfortunately, the same is now happening for Wii's Virtual Console. In September of 2017, Nintendo announced the closure of the Wii Virtual Console. The last day to purchase Wii points needed to buy games on the Virtual Console will be March 26, 2018 at 1 p.m. Pacific, and the last day to actually purchase and download those games will be January 31st, 2019. Also sometime in 2019, at a date not yet announced, you will no longer be able to download these games or transfer them from your Wii to your Wii U. There's not a lot of time left. This really makes me sad because I have a lot of fond memories of downloading and playing games on this amazing service. It certainly wasn't the first service to allow you to be able to download games, but it was my introduction to being able to download games from a variety of systems online through one console. There are of course things I won't miss, like needing to buy points in certain denominations one at a time like a shady arcade that leaves you with an odd amount that doesn't add up, painstakingly entering information with your Wiimote, including your county, waiting forever to download a game to an SD card, which brings me to probably the worst thing of all, data management. However, you could download previously unreleased games in Japanese titles, which was a tragically underused idea that wasn't really taken full advantage of. Admittedly, I haven't been on the Wii Virtual Console for quite some time, but I guess it was just comforting to know that it was there in case I needed to find a game, and I just loved hopping on the Wii Shop to see all the new old releases. And that iconic music? Forget about it. This bossa nova beat was made to make you want to buy games. Buy games. Just buy any game. Buy games, dang it. Give us your money. Do it. Add points. Buy Donkey Kong Jr. Math. Give us all your money. Give us all the money. Uneven conversion. Any denomination. Download it doesn't matter. Download it. Put it on your SD card. We points. Delete those old games. We'll always be here. This kind of marks the end of an era for me, and I really am going to miss this service. Heck, I mentioned it in just about all of my early videos. Nintendo is re-releasing their old games on the Virtual Console for the Nintendo Wii. Virtual Console. 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 Now on the Virtual Console. And if you don't act soon, you'll lose some games possibly forever, while other games will be just very hard or very expensive to find. With that in mind, you should consider throwing some money on their ASAP like this week and download some games in the next year. There's a list I can't take credit for that has over 200 games that are more or less exclusive to the Virtual Console that can be found in the links below. Sure, it's possible these games could pop up again somewhere like on a future Virtual Console, but that doesn't really seem likely considering the Switch has been out for over a year now and they still don't have a Virtual Console for it and there might not be one until possibly September of this year. Personally, I just don't want to take the chance. These games will be disappearing, possibly not to return, and it's a ton to go through, so I've created a list of the top Virtual Console and WiiWare games that I personally think you should consider. This was a huge list of games, so I had to set some limits. Less than $100 on Virtual Console and less than $100 on WiiWare for a total of $200, but I had to throw in some honorable mentions for good measure. My criteria for picking these games was threefold. First and foremost, I looked for games that can't currently be found anywhere but Wii Virtual Console, which mostly applies to the WiiWare games I selected, but there are some noted exceptions to this rule. Second, I picked games that even if you could find them outside the Virtual Console, such as a physical copy of the game, it was either rare and or expensive if a physical copy could be found elsewhere. Third, I picked highly rated and sought after games and picked my favorites from the bunch and gave them my own arbitrary ranking. It's worth noting that this is based on releases available and unavailable in the US, so prices and availability may vary depending on your area. There are tons of choices out there, and this is just based on my own research and personal opinion, so have a look at that list in the links below and let me know in the comments which ones you think are most worth your money. 
$200 may seem like a lot to throw at your Wii this late in the game, about a dozen years after the console came out, but I'd rather do that than regret not doing it while I had the chance because these games are quite possibly going, going, gone. Without any further ado, take out that tax return money that's burning a hole in your pocket because here's my list of the top Virtual Console and WiiWare games for under $100 each. Virtual Console Number 12, Super Smash Brothers. Starting with Super Smash Brothers at the bottom of the list? Yep, I did it. We're just getting started and the titles become much more uncommon and interesting from here. This game should need no introduction, but here it is. The first game in the classic Nintendo crossover fighting game made for fun with your friends and your friends from Nintendo. For the few uninitiated, this is a fighting game unlike any you've ever played before. Instead of trying to knock out your opponent like most fighting games, your goal is to actually knock your opponent out of the ring. Play as up to 12 different characters from different popular Nintendo franchises against the computer, or a friend, or three. With the new Super Smash Bros. being announced for the Nintendo Switch recently, what better time to look back at how far the series has come, and it has come a long way. Naturally, it doesn't hold up as well as the other Smash Bros. games from a visual standpoint, but it's still fun. As of now, this is the cheapest, easiest way to get a hold of this game because a physical copy is going for about 40 bucks loose and it's highly collectible. For a thousand Wii points or $10 US, you can revisit this smash from the past. Number 11, Super Adventure Island 2, or Takahashi Meijin no Daiboken Jimatsu. Master Takahashi's Great Adventure Island 2, starring Takahashi Meijin, former executive of Hudson Soft, famous for his fast trigger finger that could shoot 16 shots per second. Anyway, while we never got Adventure Island 4 outside of Japan, that game was a Metroidvania action platformer game like this one, and it's similar to some of the other games I'd recommend buying on the Virtual Console like the later games in the Wonder Boy series. The story goes, you're on your honeymoon when a storm separates you from your wife Tina and you both end up with amnesia. Tina is about to marry the king of the island she ends up on when she's suddenly kidnapped and Master Higgins shows up and agrees to rescue her. It has the feel of an Adventure Island game, but you do a lot of exploring in this Metroidvania platform adventure. Aside from the exploration and story, there are some RPG elements such as random battles on the map where you get thrown into the platforming mode unexpectedly. It got fairly high ratings and it's a very sought after game that will run you about 60 bucks, that is if you ended up with amnesia and forgot to put 800 Wii points on your console before March 26th. Number 10. Super Fantasy Zone. Yet another super game, but this time we're not talking about a Nintendo game, we're talking about a Sega Mega Drive game. This free moving scrolling shooter was originally released on the Mega Drive in Japan and Europe, but never made it to North America for some reason. If you're not familiar with the Fantasy Zone series, it's a cute shoot 'em up or a cute 'em up where you can move left, right, visit shops to buy upgrades, and even walk on the ground since you're a living spaceship with legs. The game is cute, but the plot is just a little bit dark. You play as the animate ship Opa Opa, who has to avenge his father Opapa, who was killed defending the Fantasy Zone from Dark Minon. One of the best games in the Fantasy Zone series, and one of the best looking ones though it's very similar to previous games. It also has some of the best music, composed by Kodaka Naoki, who is also responsible for the awesome Blaster Master and Euphoria soundtracks. This game stands out in the series for me because Arino played it on Game Center CX, and it was a great episode that can be seen on the Retro Game Master DVD. The game got good ratings and costs around 70-ish dollars to import, so just spend 900 Wii points and buy Retro Game Master with the savings. Opa Opa! Number 9, Cho Aniki, or Super Big Brother. A super bizarre shooter featuring a weird world and goofy plot. Originally released on the PC Engine Super CD-ROM 2, this is not only the first game in the infamous Choaniki series, but also the first game in the series to be released outside of Japan. I remember reading about this series in a video game magazine that featured weird games from Japan, and this game did not disappoint. The characters are weird, the music is weird, and the plot is most certainly weird. Basically, the champion of the Great Galaxy Bodybuilding Contest, Bo Emperor Bill, or Bo Teibiru in Japanese, a pun on bodybuild, finds himself running out of protein, so he invades other planets to create protein factories. Heroes Itaden and Benten set out to flex on Bo Emperor Bill and muscle him out of power. Collect protein to power up and use the likely titular Choaniki, Samson, and Adon as options that shoot out holes in the tops of their heads to help you on your journey. What? It's just insanity. Fly at the chance to get this now or you'll have to throw down about 40-ish dollars to import it, not to mention the hundreds of dollars for a Super CD-ROM 2 you probably don't already own. Or just lift your wallet and muscle up 900 Wii points and get pumped on the weirdest shooter you'll probably ever play. I hope you're not allergic to shellfish, cause I got these muscles. Number 8, 
Princess Tomato and the Salad Kingdom? An odd fruit veggie based adventure game. Originally released on home computers in Japan, it did come out in North America in cartridge form on the NES in 1991. You play as Sir Cucumber, who is assigned by the late King Broccoli to rescue Princess Tomato from the evil Minister Pumpkin. Accompanied by the Perky Persimmon Percy, you have to venture through the Salad Kingdom to solve puzzles and defeat Minister Pumpkin. It got pretty good ratings, but I don't have a lot to say about it because adventure games aren't my personal favorite, although I do appreciate the silly plot characters and music. It's rated as highly collectible and goes for around $90 loose, but you can have it for the low, low price of only 500 Wii points. If you like old school adventure games, consider digging into Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom and bring balance to your video game diet. Number 7. Do Re Mi Fantasy Milon no Doki Doki Dai Boken or Do Re Mi Fantasy Milon's Doki Doki Adventure Originally for the Super Famicom, this is an awesome cute Japanese platformer by Hudson Soft. This is the sequel to the NES's Milon's Secret Castle, but the difficulty has been toned way down, which is probably for the best. More friendly and fun than its predecessor, the graphics and music are fantastic. The music was composed by Chikuma Jun, who has worked on the Bomberman and Wonder Boy series. It's generally a slower paced, more whimsical platformer than its predecessor or other platformers on the Super Nintendo for that matter. It got high ratings on the Virtual Console and since it's an import, you'll have to pay either over $100 for a physical copy or you could just download it for 900 points. The game is in Japanese so there is text that you won't be able to read but you can play it without knowing Japanese. In fact, it was Juwario's top pick for his virtual console import games during the 2009 holiday season, so I'll leave my description there and you can check out his thoughts on the game along with a song by Jonathan Mann, aka Gameju, in the links below. Number 6, Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Precursor to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, some would say that this is the last truly Castlevania-y Castlevania game in the series, and some would even say that it's the best Castlevania game of all time. Well, I don't know if I agree with either of those thoughts, but it is one hell of a Castlevania game. When you first turn it on, you may think this is the German version of the game, but it is definitely Japanese. Highly rated and highly recommended. A must play for any Castlevania fan, for sure. I had to hesitate with this one a little bit because it isn't truly unavailable outside of the virtual console for a reasonable price. If you buy Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles on PSP for the reasonable price of around $15 loose, you can unlock this fine game. However, you will be playing it on your PSP unless you want to go through the trouble of hooking it up to your TV, which is possible, it's just kind of a pain. That being said, this is the best original version of this game because you can forget about the crappy SNES port. If you don't want to hand over around 150 bucks for a physical copy, 900 Wii points is all you need to avoid spending that plus another couple of hundred dollars on your PC engine if you don't already have one. So yeah, I guess if you don't have enough money for that, you could always donate blood plasma. Number 5. Musha aka Metallic Uniframe Super Hybrid Armor. I've already mentioned two shooters and trust me there's more to come, but this is the only strictly vertical shooter that I'll mention. I promise. In Musha, you're piloting a mecha in order to destroy a supercomputer that's attacking the planet. Hmm, that sounds familiar. It looks good, it plays good, and it sounds great with its speed metal soundtrack, which was very unique for shooters at the time. Turns out the composer Toshiaki Sakoda was told by the game developer heads at Compile that they didn't want his metal-inspired soundtrack and wanted music to fit the Japanese theme of the game. But when they heard his revised soundtrack with the Japanese plucky instruments, they told him to just change it back and thank the metal gods. It rocks! Oddly enough, this game was originally panned for being unoriginal in a sea of Sega shooters at the time, but like Fine Wine, fared much better when reviewed again on the Virtual Console release. I've had my eyes on this game for years, and I've never found a physical copy of it, but right now, with the magic of the Virtual Console, you can pet it in your Wii for only 800 points and save yourself about 175 bucks. Number 4, Bio Miracle Boku Teupa. Originally released for the Famicom Disk System in 1988 and then re-released in cartridge form for the Famicom in 1993, but we got the superior sound of the Disk System version on the Virtual Console. It's a really cute Japanese platformer where you play as a baby prince with a rattle and a mission to save his kingdom. Inflate enemies and send them into the atmosphere as you run, er, crawl, uh, no, run, through the cutesy stages. The Virtual Console release was the only official release outside of Japan and goes for about $60 in disc form, but then again, you have to have the Famicom Disk System to run it, which most people don't, and it costs around $80 for the system that has some reliability problems thanks to the drive belt issues. The game received decent reviews on Virtual Console, so I say spend the 600 Wii points and don't take chances with the disc version or spending twice as much for the auditorily inferior cartridge version or you might end up getting the belt and end up crying like a little baby. Number 3, Pulse Man. A pretty platformer of the Sonic variety developed by Game Freak and mostly staff that would go on to work on the Pokemon games. 
You play as Pulse Man, originally called Spark appropriately, a teenager byproduct of his human father and computer mother who has to fight his father and his gang of cyber terrorists after his father's mind is warped by living in a computer. It's a pretty crazy plot, but none of that really matters, it's just an awesome platformer. I'm not a big Sega Genesis guy, but I have to say, this game has some of the most impressive graphics that I've seen on the system. It kind of reminds me of Sonic because of the way you can speed up, and you also can zap yourself around like you do in Super Mario Galaxy. This Japanese Mega Drive game had hit North American shores once before on the Sega channel, but never got a cartridge release outside of Japan, which technically makes it an import on the Wii Virtual Console at 900 points. The Virtual Console release was well received, and a physical copy will run you several hundred dollars for a legit non-repro copy, and that's if you have the ability to play Mega Drive games in the first place. So be impulsive and zap yourself onto the Wii Shop and digitally download it before the signal is lost. Again. Number 2. Super Air Zonk Rockabilly Paradise Zonk, known in Japan as CD Denjin, or CD Electric Man, a pun on their original pun of PC Engine, PC Genjin, or PC Primitive Man, aka Bonk. This shoot 'em up is a sequel to Air Zonk, which is also available on Wii and Wii U Virtual Console, unlike this game. Originally released in North America on the Turbo Duo, I remember playing Air Zonk at Toys R Us when I was a kid and thinking there was no way I would ever be able to afford to play it again, until now. Not only one of the coolest names on this list, it's probably the most unique shooter, and I know there's a lot on this list, but hey, the Virtual Console was kinda known for him. I really dig its graphics and goofy style, almost making it a cute em up If it weren't for all the turds everywhere, nah, they're cute too. While I found it entertaining and sufficiently challenging, it was originally criticized for being too easy and got middle-of-the-road scores. However, even if you're lukewarm on this electric shooter, it's extremely expensive if you can find a physical copy going for around $500, and that doesn't include the couple hundred dollars you might have to spend to get the system. Save yourself over $500 and just get it for 600 points. No sh**. Number 1. Ironclad. Known in Japan as Chotetsu Brikinga, or Super Iron Brickinger for the Neo Geo CD, yet another shmup that was originally not available in North America outside of the Virtual Console. However, apparently if you plug the Japanese version into a North American system, it will play in English, but why bother when you can just buy it with English subtitles on the Virtual Console while you have the chance? I don't have a lot of experience with Neo Geo games personally, but it has a good soundtrack and it's a pretty shooter. One pretty unique thing about the game is that you don't take damage for bumping into another object unless it's some kind of weapon. Quite a difference from the shooters I'm used to. When it was reviewed for Virtual Console, it got high marks. Iron Clad is an awesome shooter for shooter fans and the hardest game to get a hold of on this list by far. If you don't get it now, it'll cost you around $800 to import a legit copy of the game, repros aside, and that's assuming you have a Neo Geo CD in the first place. Strike while the iron's hot and spend a thousand points, or wait and spend a thousand dollars. It's your choice. Honorable Mentions! Number 5. Act Razor. A very sought after and unique game that will have you building a civilization like other simulators, but will also have you platforming and hacking and slashing enemies all in the same game. If you don't get it now, it won't run you too much to get a physical copy, but why not pay 800 points instead of 30? Save yourself 22 bucks and save your followers by getting it now. Number 4. Splatterhouse 2. This game doesn't make the list because you can unlock it in the 2010 release of Splatterhouse, but if you don't want to go through all that, you can get the first M-rated game released on the Virtual Console and save yourself from having to track down a physical copy for over $60. She doesn't have to die, Rick. You can save her. And this game for 800 points. Number 3. Ogre Battle The March of the Black Queen This one didn't quite make the list for two reasons. It's also on PlayStation in the US, but this is the higher rated version of the two and goes for about $80 for the Super Nintendo version. It's only 800 points, but I actually don't really want to recommend this one too highly because personally, I find it extremely boring, but that's probably just because I'm not the strategy RPG real-time tactics type, but if that's your bag, you won't want to pass this highly rated extremely collectible game before it costs you dearly. Number 2. Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol. Okay, I'm breaking the rules here and kind of making this a two for one. The one I really want to highlight here is the expensive Ghoul Patrol because once it's gone on the Virtual Console, you'll be spending over $100 to get your hands on it. However, like my buddy Derek from Stop Skeletons from Fighting has said, Zombies Ate My Neighbors is the better game. On the other hand, if you have to buy Zombies Ate My Neighbors outside of the Virtual Console, it'll only run you around $30 and both games are only 800 points on the Virtual Console, so pick your brains and make the decision yourselves. Number one. Chrono Trigger. This didn't quite make the proper list because it isn't truly exclusive to the Wii Virtual Console. However, while available in many different versions, this is the highest ranked version and the original. 
If you know anything about RPGs, this game again needs no introduction. One of the most beloved and coveted RPGs from Squaresoft outside of the Final Fantasy series. With art by Toriyama Akira and music by Mitsuda Yasunori and Uematsu Nobuo, it's a match made in heaven. Available elsewhere in different versions, but the SNES is where it started. The magnificent multi-ending RPG is going for over $100 loose, or you could just pull that trigger in time and get it on the virtual console for 800 points. WiiWare Number 11, Dr. Mario Online RX, Prescription Edition. I know what you're thinking, another Mario game already at the bottom of the list? This must be some list if Dr. Mario's at the bottom. Well, it is. But for this game, it's Dr. Mario minus the online since that was shut down in April of 2014, so it's just Dr. Mario, but it's cool for what it is. There are some interesting modes here, including Flash Mode from Dr. Mario 64, where you have to kill a particular virus before time runs out. There's also the motion-controlled close-up virus buster mode originally from Brain Age 2. It was received fairly well and is an interesting game, but not the ultimate Dr. Mario or anything, especially since it's been stripped of online play capabilities and you can only play with two players locally. If you're a Dr. Mario fan that needs more Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario Online RX is the prescription, at a thousand Wii points. Number 10, Gradius Rebirth. Part of Konami's Rebirth series, and as the name would imply, it's a rebirth of old Konami games like Gradius. Kind of a remake of older Gradius levels rather than a completely original Gradius game, but there's some new stuff. It's your good old buddy Gradius, but with a visual overhaul and a great remix soundtrack. There are some nice little additions here and there, but from what I've seen, it's more of the same, just better. It's pretty, and received good ratings, but it's pretty much the same as older Gradius games. Can't get enough Gradius? Then get it for a thousand points before it's out of this world. Number 9. Misto Duo W. Whoa, I love me some Misto Duo. While it's largely the same as other Misto Duo games in the series, the theme is around the world, which is what the W stands for, by the way. Worth picking up if you're a hardcore Misto Duo fan that has to have all the games in the series. But to be honest, it's another Misto Duo puzzle game, which isn't a bad thing for a game with really good ratings. But it might not be enough for you to drop down 800 points on a WiiWare game if you're not a game collection completionist. It's whoa, 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 wonderful, Mr. Dwillow. Number 8, Excite Bike World Rally. It's old school style Excite Bike, but in 3D. It plays very similarly to the Excite Bike of old, but unfortunately it does have unnecessary motion controls for wheelies, but you get used to it and it's not so bad, but otherwise it's like the Excite Bike you know and love. Race around the world on different tracks with varying difficulty and some crazy bike jump in action. It got decent reviews and it's pretty much what you'd expect. Excite Bike in 3D more or less, but I think it's worth popping a motion controlled wheelie for a thousand points. Number 7, Art Style, Cubello. Part of the Art Style series, somewhere between Bust a Move and Tetrasphere is Cubello. Cubello, I don't know, whatever it is. An interesting puzzle game that definitely took some getting used to, but was fun once I knew what to do. Basically, you shoot different colored blocks in your magazine and try to match up colored blocks so they disappear before the nightmare of blocks gets too close to the screen to swallow you up, I don't know. Basically, you have a time limit to defeat the looming cube catastrophe. Bonus points for originality and aesthetic appeal. It received good ratings when it was released on WiiWare and for only 600 points, you can get a hold of it before it disappears. Or swallows you up. Number six, you, me, and the cubes. Probably the weirdest puzzle game I've played aside from Catherine, but this game is much more wholesome, sort of. The short of it is you fling people at a cube and try to balance them without them falling off. The long of it is there's a lot more going on here that requires more analysis than I have time or brain power to muster right now. The last console game by the late director of the D series, musician and game designer Ino Kenji, who is responsible for the game's concept, design, and music. Dark, strange, and beautiful, this game received high ratings and comes recommended at a thousand points. Rest in peace, Ino Kenji. Number five, fluidity. This is probably one of the best uses of motion controls on the Wii, a system that forced motion controls on many games with mixed results, but in this game, it just makes sense. Tilting your controller tilts the world around the main character, a puddle of water that has to perform various tasks on the pages of the Encyclopedia Aquaticus, like hitting switches, putting out fires, and the dark matter known ominously as the influence. Keep your water pulled up or evaporate into nothing and lose a life. One of the highest ranked games on WiiWare and also one of the most expensive at 1200 points, but worth it to play a fun action puzzle game that will make you wish that all the watered down motion control based games on the Wii work this well. Shots fired. Number four. Maboshi's Arcade, based on the shapes, circle, bar, or bow, and square. This game is fun because of its simplicity. 
probably more fun than it should be, but it does have a level of depth once you start adding the effects from the other boards. Admittedly, I would have liked to have played these games more, but I took Virtual Console for granted in the past, so I gave myself a 5 minute timer to capture footage for each of these games, which I almost never stuck to, but I spent the most of the time recording about a half hour on this game. Whoa, that's 6 times as much footage as I should have, but I just had to take the time to figure out the game and honestly, I got a bit addicted to it. Simple addictive gameplay and a great soundtrack. Can't ask for much more than that. This highly rated WiiWare game will puzzle you and unexpectedly rob you of your free time for only 800 points. Number 3. Tomenasan na. A button does it. A very quirky auto runner that has the aesthetics of Karateka, but the breakdancing was actually acted out with motion capture courtesy of B-Boy Isopu. It's a short, fun game that can be played with or without friends, but to be honest, this game gets a higher score from me than it probably would from other reviewers simply because it tickles my funny bone in that weird, quirky Japanese humor kind of way. A businessman running late has to jump over Dookie and avoid getting farted on by giraffes? Yep, instant bonus points for you Tomina-san, and an easy buy for me as a well-rated WiiWare game at only 500 Wii points. Number 2, Contra Rebirth. It's Contra, a new Contra game to be exact. What I've played of this is a lot like the later year Contra games on PS2 with the over-the-top action like this bit where you're fighting an alien boss as fragments of your spaceship plummet towards Earth and start burning up in the atmosphere. Not just another remake, a completely original Contra game that can't be missed. It received good ratings and contrary to the previously mentioned Rebirth game, this is a completely new Contra game and it's definitely worth running to the Wii Shop and gunning a thousand points onto your balance before it goes away. Number 1. Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth Obviously I'm biased with this being in the number one slot because I'm such a huge Castlevania fan, but hey, it's my list and I think the game has earned it. This action platformer produced by the one and only Iga was based on Castlevania The Adventure on the Game Boy, but luckily not too closely considering how meh that game was. Classic music, graphics, and gameplay make this a very welcome return to form for the series. This is a totally new, unique Castlevania game inspired by Castlevania The Adventure, not just a remake, and it's an absolute must-have for any Castlevania fan. Don't take my word for it, though, because it received good scores when it first came out in 2009. Konami's Rebirth series is rumored to be coming to the Switch, but this is unconfirmed, so maybe don't take any chances and whip up a brand new Castlevania adventure from 2009 for only a thousand points while you still have the chance. Honorable Mentions Number 5, the Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicle games. I'm almost surprised I'm not recommending these games more, but the Final Fantasy games released for WiiWare just aren't my thing. Hardcore Final Fantasy fans, especially fans of the one-off games involving the cutesy characters from the Crystal Chronicles series, might want to check this one out. It's more of the simier non-RPG style, but My Life as a King is a city-building game that costs 1500 points, and My Life as a Dark Lord is a tower defense game that costs 1000 points, and has a demo to try for free. They both got good ratings and are interesting deviations from the typical Final Fantasy RPGs, but quite frankly aren't my thing, so they don't get my recommendation even though they're definitely noteworthy. Peep them out and live out your Final Fantasy power fantasies. Number 4. Adventure Island The Beginning I wanted to recommend this game more, but since there's plenty of games mentioned in this video to represent this series, this game has to take a backseat. It's a remake of the original, but with goofy 3D graphics and so-so controls. It got bleh ratings and at 800 points, you'd honestly be better off playing Super Adventure Island 2 if you need your Master Higgins fix, but it's noteworthy for being a 3D adaption of an already great game from the Stone Age, so there's that. Number 3. Bust a Move Plus Remember how Taito released 3D versions of their games like Bubble Bobble on XBLA? Well, they did that for WiiWare too, but they also made a 3D version of Bust a Move exclusively for WiiWare. I'm a confessed Bust a Move addict, but even I have to admit, it's pretty much just more Bust a Move, but in 3D. But it did get fairly good ratings. If that sounds like your kind of thing, bust out your wallet for 600 points. And if it doesn't, move on to the next game. Number 2, Blaster Master Overdrive. As a fan of the series, I wish I could recommend this game more, but it doesn't quite make the list of recommended games because for some reason, it just never grabbed me after trying to play it numerous times. Don't get me wrong, I was psyched to see another Blaster Master game after a decade of nothing, but now that I've played the far superior remake Blaster Master Zero, I'd say your money is better spent on that than this literally slow-moving action-adventure game with some questionable controls. The game got lukewarm reviews, but if you have the extra thousand points to spend, as an honorable mention, it's worth picking up and blasting away in my opinion. But I just can't hold it out there as the top of the list for its problems because it simply isn't. Number 1. Jet Rocket I don't think I've ever heard of this game and I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised. It's a platforming collectathon, which I didn't see a lot of when I was looking through WiiWare titles because there is some real rubbish on there, but this game definitely is a diamond in the rough. 
If you're not sure about this game, there's a demo. If you're looking for a break from my list of puzzle games and shooters, consider blasting off with the decently scored Jet Rocket for a thousand points. So there you go, $197 if you bought them all, which leaves you with three. And you can't buy anything with that, so maybe you could put another $10 on there and buy an honorable mention or two. Or just leave it on there to thank Nintendo for about a dozen years of a great service. Or you could just ask for your change. There are no refunds for Wii Points, Void in New Hampshire.